guys, let's have a look at the week 12 through 15 module for the information that I've recently posted regarding this final paper project. Uh, again, part of my goal is to make this transparent enough that you feel very clear between the rubric and the overall presentation of these last three weeks what you need to do in search of your objective in this class. Now, one of the things I've added uh, is an overview. The first link now is an overview of the week 12 through 15 assignments, clarifies the points for each step of it. Uh, underneath that is the week 12 rough draft rubric. I think that was already there. A question the prof link looking for any questions. If you've got a question, probably somebody else does too. So you're doing us all a favor if you ask it. Uh, the week 12 rough draft submission is there so that you can submit your paper. When you submit your paper, uh, this at the end of this week, I wish I could tell it to start filling you in your peer reviews as soon as they other people submit theirs, but I have to give it a date that's after the due date for your own paper submission. So that means next Monday at midnight the internal mechanism in the course is going to churn out three names for each of you for papers to review. I keep in touch next week if you've got one, if you've got two, if there's any troubles that way and in terms of where you find them, um, that I believe it lets you know that it, where they are, but I do understand that this platform can still be confusing. There's the final paper grading rubric is now up, so it's got changes from the rough draft, right? There's a, a, a higher level of mastery happening in that final paper. And then this last link is the one I want to show you here. Advice for writing the rough draft and final paper. And I'm going to expand on this advice a little bit right now. Uh, so I call this how to picture your final paper and have a section there on what would constitute a beautiful paper. Let me just go over that quickly. Describe the problem that you are either going to solve or the complex issue for which you are shining a light and contributing to a clearer understanding. So the question about this thesis solving a problem, a thesis driven argument, is that after you've introduced a problem like how do I make sense in 2014 of religious traditions in which spirits are engaged in people's bodies and lives, that's a pretty interesting problem. Do you remember the beginning of this semester? Wondering where is this course going, starting with voodoo? Um, and that by having gone through all of this information, you're now in a different place. You are now in the place where you could articulate to your colleagues, to your family members, some sense of how personhood is understood in these traditions and how maybe our world becomes a little more interesting when you see different models of personhood in these religious traditions. I like to think that we are all spoken through by our technologies, by the power of money in our culture, by subconscious and unconscious, and we have lots of names for the things that talk to us and talk through us that we never think are exotic. How much is your phone telling you what to do and what to pay attention to these days? So that this idea that spirits are talking through us, um, you know, maybe this is my little uh, petit bon ange. Maybe this is my little angel now. Maybe I don't travel anywhere without it. So uh, Part of what we've done in this course is expand our capacity, challenge our assumptions 
about what is normal in subjectivity, what is normal in personhood, by seeing models that are different from our own. And through that process, we might be able to see our own tradition more critically. That might be one of the problems that might drive your study of these two, your comparison and contrast of these two traditions. Um, we can talk more about that thesis and what will constitute a good thesis for an eight-page paper. What would constitute a beautiful paper in bullet two? Each of you has to frame that problem with regard to the ritual process, particularly the liminal stage of the ritual process. So after the introduction, your paper needs to define its terms, including providing the intellectual history of the term liminality and also other important terms such as African diaspora, spirit possession, spirit, right? Murphy told us what spirit would mean for his purposes. You might need to define what spirit will mean for your purposes. Hemispheric perspective. Murphy expands on the role of a hemispheric perspective in his book in his final chapter, which I did not assign, but I am here and now highly recommending as one of the best ways for you to start into your final paper is to read that final chapter of Murphy because that's where he is wrapping up what have I done in this book. Here it is, which is what a good conclusion does. All right, third, provide an accurate characterization of each religion. I want you guys to get this stuff right now. I'm giving you enough time. We've got three weeks to write this final paper. If you're talking about Haitian voodoo, I want to know that you can accurately describe the difference between a Guobonage and a Tibonage. You got to be able to tell me about big angel and little angel, what role they play in their understanding of a person and how this transformation of a self, right? So you have to house that Guobonage in the pocket so that you have room and receptivity for a spirit I want to see that accurately described. Um, if it's candomblé, how long is your isolation period and what is the transformation process that opens you up to a receptivity to a royal pantheon? That's interesting. Um, so it's accurate. And so my three internal bullets on that Design your presentation from the outside to the inside. Let's follow Murphy. It's a good model. It's a good design. It means that you will consistently provide two packages of relative equal volume in which your reader then can do this comparison and contrast with you with um, similar information regarding both. So historical and geographical context. Does it matter that slavery ended in a different time in the two places you're talking about? It sure does. It sure does. That is going to influence the, the closeness and proximity of um, the connection with recent or less recent people coming from Africa and the relationship of the connection to Africa will depend on when slavery ran, what kind of numbers of people were brought, what kind of concentration they were in their communities. So give me that outside that here's the big picture on Haiti, here's the big picture on the Black South, you know, wherever it is that you're doing your thing. Move from the outside, then to the inside is where we're going to look at this is the transformation of a self in Haitian voodoo. This is the transformation of a self in Revival Zion, maybe. So outside to inside on two traditions. That's a design structure. Um, I'm guessing that it will work best for you to thoroughly discuss one, then thoroughly discuss the other, rather than say, here's Haiti's historical context, here's Jamaica's. 
here's Haiti's person, here's Jamaica's person. But you can decide which is working best for your information. The conclusion of this paper might itself take the last two pages. You might clarify what is unique and what is different in comparison and contrast the last two pages before you recap and reiterate your thesis in the conclusion. Murphy used an entire final chapter in order to conclude his material. Um, then I walk you through, we go back here to some of Brandon's beautiful quotes. You guys can read George Brandon, and then I make some reference to my article on spirit possession. You can read that information now better than you could in the first week of the class. So do it, because it is so rich with these little threads that relate to everything we did over the last 12 weeks that it's going to come to life for you now in ways that it might have seemed obtuse when you first read it. Um, I walk you through the progress of the course, how we hit that first paper, and a little bit of coaching at the end. So I hope you guys will feel that you know what to do in this paper and that you will be refreshed on where we have come from so that you uh, will have that beautiful thesis appropriate to an eight page paper regarding how much context and focus on personhood brings you to a place where you can beautifully articulate with this model of subjectivity here and this model of subjectivity here of, of personhood, that transformed person coming through their ceremonial events that have connected them to spirit, that you can be precise and you might have an aha for you and for me regarding what is accomplished, what work has happened in the tradition and in the process of us comparing the tradition and the ritual process. I hope this is of some help. Please call, schedule. I'll try to have that scheduler up and running, but beyond the hours on the scheduler, I'm ready for more calls. Bye.